we think that commercial autonomy in, in aviation, it is technologically ready. It's not a 2050 thing, it's a today thing. Autonomy does provide the possibility of safer aircraft. You want to make sure you don't introduce more problems. I jump in my RISE helicopter and then I go and I fly to work. There's nothing like actually getting into our cockpit and flying after you know, 30 minutes of training. Now come all the way up on the roller. Up, 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 up. The other way, other way, other way. Other way with the roller. No, up. So these are electric motors, a lot like what you would see in today's electric cars, as an example. And there's 12 of them. At the airport in Hollister, California, south of the San Francisco Bay Area, one vision of the future of flight is about to take flight with the click of a mouse. Select and lift off now. Nobody's on board this plane. Nobody's on board this aircraft. So this aircraft uh, just took off with fully automated software and it stabilizes itself and now it's flying its pre-planned route. It belongs to Whisk Aero, an air taxi startup that's been at it for more than a decade. The aircraft, an earlier prototype, a testbed for what's to come. Brian Utko is CEO of Whisk. So it's pretty unique to be able to see an aircraft like this that again, doesn't have a pilot on board, but is doing these types of maneuvers, which are very unique for an aircraft in the first place. Like this aircraft just flew backwards and flew a bunch of pirouettes. It's called eVTOL, electric vertical takeoff and landing. And it could change how we all get around. New motors, new aircraft, flying passengers, and doing it without a pilot. That's like four things <laughs> that you're trying to accomplish. Uh, is that doable? I mean, is that, is that too much? Or, I mean, have you, have you thought about that, you know, in terms of, of, of what you're trying to tackle with yeah. something like this? Well, I, uh, my, my general rule for what it's worth is one miracle, and then you could have a lot of other stuff, but you only get one miracle. And, and our one miracle in that vernacular is autonomy. It's certifying safe, commercial autonomy to put people on board an autonomous aircraft for the first time. Utco says it's safer because a computer can monitor 12 motors better than any human. And going autonomy first is the only way the economics work, by removing the pilot. The real value of autonomy actually comes from the flexibility of the transportation network that you get to operate. Because you don't necessarily have to have uh, do this very hard matching problem of airworthy pilots to airworthy airplanes to where are the passengers. The Whisk fleet has done about 1,600 unmanned flights to get to this, back at the company's headquarters in Silicon Valley. So this is our Gen 6 aircraft platform. So we are in the process of certifying this airplane. It carries four people. It goes about 100 miles and it takes off vertically. It flies like an airplane and it lands vertically. The idea is lots of Whisk aircraft picking up passengers around cities at vertiports, then dropping them at the airport. Where do you put people's bags? Well, we can actually put them here in the frunk, uh, just like an electric car. Inside the cabin, there are no flight controls. There aren't many things that you may need on a 14 minute flight that's very short, but if you do need something, um, there is a button um, and this help button here. Um, doesn't control the airplane, it doesn't tell it to land, it doesn't tell it to do anything. What it does is it actually connects with a hospitality team member. On the ground, this is the view the multi-vehicle supervisor will see. That's the person watching the Whisk fleet that's airborne. They won't be pilots, but will be trained. What that training is, is still being developed. John Lovegren is head of autonomy at Whisk. They're not looking at low-level information like gauges on what's on the aircraft. They're looking around where the aircraft is, what sort of how far along it's in, in its plan. Today's regulations, for example, are just fundamentally built around the concept of a, a pilot in command that's on board, right? No one, when they wrote the rules 100 years ago or whenever it was, thought about the concept of that pilot not being on the aircraft. Aviation is racing toward automation and electrification with lots of startups and cash. It's a journey that wasn't really possible at this scale until now. We are at a tremendous convergence in technologies that enable this kind of airplane. We're starting to get used to the idea of cars with autonomous features and self-driving taxis. Hollywood has always had a big imagination when it comes to personal flying and flying without a pilot.
but the history of aviation is a story of automation. In commercial planes, cockpit crews have shrunk from four to three to two as computers take over. Of course, there is autopilot, and some small planes come with an autonomous landing function. If there's an emergency, emergency hit a button and the plane land. gets on the ground. At the edge of LAX Airport in Los Angeles, in the aviation corridor of El Segundo, Skyrise wants to put flight controls in the hands of everyone. There is the youthful energy of a startup with about 100 people. Reduce aviation fatalities to zero. There's not very many companies that you're going to see that that is the mission. It's like trying to create a cool product that's safe at the same time. And nearby, there's evidence of their work. In these cases are mechanical parts taken out of a helicopter. Imagine all of this replaced by wires, chips, and sensors. The aircraft digitized. All of this feeding into what Skyrise calls Flight OS, Flight to the left a, a bit. universal we'll operating system on a touchscreen. Are you going there? We're He's getting a look at it yeah, in a hangar good, almost an hour control. outside of LA. Ahead of a test flight, I'll be piloting. And I'm assuming you've never flown helicopters before. No. Skyrise has blurred the image of the Flight OS screen and the control stick, shot by their cameras to protect trade secrets. We started with helicopters because they're just so hard to fly. Um, it's like rubbing your belly, patting your head, and riding a unicycle all at the same time. And that's just a hover. 33-year-old Mark Roden is CEO of Skyrise. It's something he's been working on for six years. We built a universal operating system that makes it a lot easier to fly aircraft and really takes off the table the top causes for fatal accidents. When you look at the top causes of fatal accidents in this industry today, almost all of them are pilot error. And it's just because these aircraft are so hard to fly and the cognitive load on the pilots, it's just so high. Roden says Skyrise won't replace pilots and it's not proposing the government lessen requirements to become a pilot. It just wants everyone to fly. We're going to help usher in more people to be pilots. But what all these aircraft and systems need is certification and sign-off by regulators. In the U.S., that's the FAA. The agency could not provide anyone on camera to talk about autonomous flight or its safety. But in a written statement, the FAA said, we never compromise on safety because that's our mission. Manufacturers must meet the high safety standards that define modern aviation. And the best innovators will find ways to meet these safety standards. Skyrise says it's close. Now moving into a phase of flight testing that gets its whole system to FAA approval. We decided to focus on technologies that were familiar uh, to the FAA and already have been certified. It's just using those technologies in a new way for general aviation. Big commercial planes like this Airbus already have this kind of digital control system Skyrise is building. As for EV tall makers, unlike WISC, others are starting with a pilot on board and will launch sooner. WISC is further off with a new aircraft, new electric motors, and no pilot. All by 2030, it says. It also has some convincing to do. I mean, I guess the equivalent would be today we can order up an Uber or a rideshare service in a vehicle that we don't maintain or own, driven by someone we don't know. Mm -hmm. Today, expectation is, you know, they're going to get us to where we're going safely. Our general philosophy is show, don't tell. We think that ultimately we're, we're not going to be able to convince people about this. We're going to have to ultimately show that it's incredibly safe and as safe as today's air transportation system and that there's a real value proposition. Debbie Kirkman is director of Advanced Aviation Systems at the Flight Safety Foundation, which has been advancing aviation safety for more than 75 years and did some of the first accident investigations back then. We are not very far along in really being able to certify that autonomy will do what we want it to do without having unintended negative effects. So this is going to be tough for those uh, operators that, and manufacturers that want to go directly to autonomous operations. Software, machines, artificial intelligence can do many things, but can it almost replace a human pilot? What happens when something goes wrong in your system? Our whole system is triply redundant and dissimilar, which means that it only will fail one time every 114,000 years of continuous operation, which is an unfathomable number. It's the same probability as a wing falling off of an Airbus or a Boeing. It's never happened. On the ground, self-driving vehicles have crashed into other vehicles. People have been injured and killed. The skies are a different kind of space, more regulated, 
with no human starting out in front of a plane. But everything moves faster, and there's nowhere to pull over if there's a problem. We can't anticipate every possible thing that could go wrong. And eventually, some conditions may show up where we could never have anticipated it, and automation may make the wrong choice. Autonomous flight is a quest that will take billions. Boeing is a big investor in WISC, and shortly after our visit, the big plane maker bought the company. At the 2024 Summer Olympics in Paris, Volocopter will fly single passengers on this 18-motor craft, but with a pilot on board. That doesn't mean the skies will soon be buzzing. It always takes longer than you think. <laughs> Elon Crow is a professor of aeronautics at Stanford University. Its proximity to Silicon Valley puts it in the middle of this energetic time in aviation. In fact, Crow was there at the start of what became WISC. The point is that we need to do that in a way that takes as long as is needed to make it safe and useful. But on this day, at this airport in Camarillo, California, outside LA, we're taking flight in this Robinson R-44 helicopter equipped with Skyrise Flight OS. You could say, oh, I want to go 50 knots. You just put five zero, swipe. I am not a pilot. Off you go. I have zero flight hours. You're going to be a pilot. But I spend about 45 minutes in the cockpit with Skyrise test out. pilot Alex so Chong. Three fingers up will make us climb. Flight suit on. It's time to take off. Alex, the test pilot, gets us off the ground then hands the controls up, up, over to me. Up, 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 the other way, other way, other way, other way, you're the roller. No, up. Up, up, up. Yeah, up, up, there you go. I'm going up. up. Okay, now we're gonna go up. So the stick takes some right. getting used to. Yeah, that's good. But soon, I'm flying a helicopter yeah, yeah, over Ventura way, County way, with taps so and swipes. Start. There you go, see? After about yeah, 35 well. minutes, we can point our nose back to the airport. So if you can just roll out about here. Test pilot Alex. All right, here we go. Takes over to land. Technology is taking over more of fly. Maybe as easy as driving a car, tapping a screen. But is it really? With everything moving and spinning faster. 